All right, how's it going, folks? I'm back. Um, I did re I respawned just to get a better position on some of these targets so I can demonstrate the next methods here. So I've gotten in front of this particular guy here, and um, I'm going to start demonstrating some of these uh, methods uh, using the attack disc and this and this in conjunction with the speed side to um, to position yourself or to maneuver to get yourself into position for an attack. So the first thing is computing a perpendicular course to target. For this particular calculation, we use the front side of the disc, okay? And we've got a situation here where we've got this this ship. We've got this particular ship here, okay? Uh, and we want to um, we want to figure out if we want to do a fast 90, for example. We want to say, okay, I want to set myself on a perpendicular course to, to target, okay? So. So first and foremost, what we'll do is we'll derive his his course because we know on the map we know his angle on bow. Let's assume we know his angle on bow. We'll compute. Uh, we'll compute the uh, his his true course. So the first thing I have to do uh, when I want to use the front side of the attack disc is I have to set own course two one zero. Okay. So two one zero on the attack disc. We set that two one zero here. Okay. So we got that set. Now the next thing we do. Is we um, we get the bearing and we set the angle on bow. So first of all, we'll get the bearing, relative bearing. Okay, and the relative bearing here is uh, one two nine. So we'll go into here and we say this is the bearing uh, arm here one two nine. We'll set that set that right here. Okay, one two nine is set. Now we let's say we just estimated or measured the angle on bow at, at 51 degrees. Okay, so 51. So we know it's bow left. So we, we move the uh, target disc so that 51 is aligned with the bearing here, and we read the true course off of 210. Ha! Well, I set I I measured it before and I set parallel course. So there we go. It's equal to our course. Okay, so that's how you get true course. So 210. So that being said. I want to say, okay, I want to do a fast 90 uh, as the first step here. So all you simply do, uh, there's two ways to do it. This is the um, attack course pointer here. You just simply set that to the nine to align with this 90 degree line right here, this red red green arrow line, just like that. Okay, and then you can you can just read off the um, the attack course uh, here as 300. Okay. And the reason why I did that is because we know the bow is going to be going left. Okay, the bow is going to be left. We're going to be approaching him from his port side, so therefore we know it's going to be three zero zero. Okay, the other thing you can do is if you is you can simply just say at the ninety because you know bow is going to be left at the ninety left. Just read off the course that that is right um, right above that there. So three zero zero. So so what we'll do. Is we'll come to course 300 now, and we'll, and we'll simulate uh, turning onto an attack course. Um, I'm going to go ratchet the speed down a little bit to um, somewhat simulate the uh, approach speed underwater. Okay, so and then we'll turn on to a course of, of uh, 300 to put us on a perpendicular attack course. Okay, so so that is the that is the method of of calculating a perpendicular attack course with the um, with the attack disc. Okay, so as we do that, and I'll, I'll even just further ratchet the speed down here because we'll, we'll get it down to about three knots. And again, I'm doing the surface just for ease of maneuverability and. Um, the fact that I don't want to have to navigate underwater solo, <coughs> I'll just we'll just pretend like we're underwater, for argument's sake, uh, doing this method. So, or doing this uh, using these discs. So we'll get the speed down a little bit more. Coming up on three zero zero here. Uh, we turn quicker the slower we go. So, uh, so we'll get this down to be about there. Here, okay, so that's good, and then it will ratchet the speed down even further. 
is going to give us. Yeah, that's going to give us a workable speed there, I think. So, okay, so that so that we're on a perpendicular attack course now. So the the other handy thing to compute is uh, distance from track. Okay, distance from track. It's a simple multiplication problem, and it's it's equal to range times the sine of the angle on bow. Okay, range times the sine of the angle on bow is the distance from track. That means that at the point that this target will present a 90 degree angle on bow to you, you will be that distance away. Okay, so let's just say we range him at 3,800. Okay, and his angle on bow is 53. So we, we're, since we're doing multiplication, we align the 3,800 with 90 right here and the 55 <coughs> or 53 excuse me 53 is what we read off we set pointer to 53 and at 53 we read off the distance from track we will be um 30 about 30 uh 40 3040 meters away from uh from him when he crosses our um when he crosses our track. Okay, that's the distance we are off of his track currently right now, okay? Alright, so that um, so that's that. So that's the other that's another another uh, calculation. So now what I want to do now is there's a way using the speed disk to to figure out how fast we need to go in order to put ourselves a certain distance off of this target's track. So let me just draw his track here. It's two and zero, okay? Say we want to put ourselves like 500 to 1,000 meters off of his track and we're approaching him underwater. Okay, we, we need to know, oftentimes, what speed we need to set in order to put ourselves, assuming we're doing a fast 90, in order to, to, to put ourselves at that specified distance off of his track when he gets to the shoot bearing. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do. And we actually, our speed that, we're, that we need is probably going to be a little faster than it would be up ideal because typically in the, this angle on bow would probably be a little less but okay so for our but for argument's sake let's just let's go as is here so the first thing we need to do is we need to compute the distance the target will travel to cross our bow okay um we kind of already figured that out a little bit here but we uh what we need to do in order to derive that uh and let me just get up to the scope here real quick it's gonna be very similar to our other answer here um oops Okay, so we've got uh, okay, we've got a couple pieces of information here, but what we need to derive that is we need it's similar to the other formula. It's just it's range times the sine of the bearing will give us the, the distance whoop, the distance he needs to traverse to cross our bow. Okay, so let's just read the range off as. 30, 30 to 200 meters, okay, and the bearing is 32. So we go back here and we say 3,200 meters here times 32, which is here, but he needs to travel 1,700 meters, okay, 1,700 meters to cross our bow currently. Right, so so we'll note that down. Okay, we'll note 1,700 meters down. Oops, 1,700 meters down. Okay. All right. So we have that we have that figure noted. The second step is we need to compute the time for that target to reach that point. We know his speed. We've already computed his speed. Let's just say. Okay. So um, so at the, what we need to do is figure out based on that speed and that distance, what's the time that it's going to take that target to traverse that? So since we're dealing with a rate speed, we use our, we set the pointer to that speed, 7.2 knots, okay, and now we simply just go to the, to the, to the distance of 1700, and we read off the time that he needs to cross that, 7 minutes, 10, 20, 30, about seven minutes and 38 seconds okay let's just say 738 that's what he needs that's how long it's going to take him to cross to cross our bow so so that's the piece we know now 
we need to compute the distance from track. First of all, we need to know how far it is off we are off of this track, so we'll do that again. 2800 is the range, 62 is the angle on bow. 2800, 62. Very quick. Distance from track is 24, um, about 27, uh, 27, 2475. Okay, 2475. So 2475. Okay. So we know that's the distance for the track. So now what we want to do is we want to say, yeah, that's our distance for the track. I want to be 500 meters away when I shoot. 500. Do the subtraction. What you come up with is uh, is 1975. Uh, I need to go 1,975 meters to um, uh, to get to a point where I will be 500 meters of the shot. So now I need to go and do this calculation using the speed disk and figure out my speed in this time, this distance in this time, to get my speed that I have to set right now in order to get to the correct spot. Okay, so, um, so, so 1975, 738, so 197, oops, 1975, uh, 7 minutes and 38 seconds is right here. At 1975, which was right about uh, here, okay, uh, right there. So, okay, so I need to I need to be going 8.4 knots in order to get to get there. So, there you go. So I need to go 8.4 knots. So I know that that's between slow and dead slow. So I'll go slow speed. And then I'll go 10 slower from that, and we're just going to kind of feel our feel our way down to 8.4 knots. But but we're in reality, you'd you know you'd probably be going slower than that because you you have a smaller angle on bow um, for this particular exercise. Uh, when you're approaching, uh, you'll be further ahead of the target than you are than I am right now. So again, 8.4 or so knots is what I need to put my, to position myself 500 meters off the target's track by the time he gets to. Um, by the time he gets gets here, okay. Now that's the time he'll get to zero, so he won't be quite when we shoot. If we're doing a true fast 90, he won't be quite at that yet. He'll be a little over 500, but it's really no matter. So, um, okay, so I, we're going a little too fast, so I'm going to go tension and 10 slower again to try to get down to about 8.4. It's going to give me, it's just a little too much. This might be, we might have to just be, we might not be exact, okay, but we'll get, you get the idea. 8 point, so like, so 8.2, okay, that's pretty close enough. Okay, so, so here we go. So we'll just see how this, how this works out. Now, it's not going to be exact by any means, okay, but it's going to be, it's going to be pretty close, I would think. All right, so, very handy way to, um, handy way to plan your attack. Uh, he's right there, okay. Just make sure our speed is lower than I think it is. And since we lost a little time, so we're losing, we lost a little time, but it's going to be, it'll be pretty close, I would think, here, as we'll see. So you can see, it's going to be at, the, at 90 is what it's, is what it's going to be at. So, um. So you may have to take that into account a little bit when you, um, if I wanted to do a true fast 90, remember, those of you who don't know how to do this, you simply just take, set your scope at zero, set the angle on bow at 90, okay, and then that's, that's why it's called a fast 90, is because you set, you, you set it to zero, set 90, um, so then set your speed to what you want, okay, 7.2, uh, the range is going to be, you know, so probably somewhere this ballpark here, I would guess. Uh, 1,500 there. Okay, yeah, so we're it's getting there. 
and then um, set our torpedo depth. We'll just we'll just shoot. Might as well shoot him here. Um, we'll shoot him at the. We can shoot him at the zero. Um, theoretically, it's supposed to be. I lost some time in this whole all this these guys. So I should have actually. When I did the time between I, the time I did the measurements and the time I actually accelerated, I should have accelerated right away. I didn't do that, so that's why we're, we lost some time here. So that's why our range is not the 500 that we wanted. It's higher than that because I, I lost a little time. Okay, so we'll set um, we'll set to about a thousand here, and then um, we'll shoot when he's when he's at zero. We won't be a true zero degree. Um, Gyro angle shot, but the just of the gyro angle. But as long as you're within, you know, 20, 10, or 20, 30 degrees of your bow, you're still in pretty good shape here. Okay, so. Um, so we'll go ahead and shoot there. And then, uh, and that's that. So that that's the speed for attack position now. So you can see we were about um, 500 to 600 meters off because we didn't accelerate right away. Um, when we did this one, the method. So when you're doing that method, you need to make sure you you get get to up to the speed you need right away um, to make up for lo the lost time in you doing the calculations. Okay, but in reality, it takes you a little quicker. It's just, I, I took a little more time because I was going through the explanation. But uh, at any rate, that's that method. Okay. Uh, the other thing to note too is that oftentimes it's and, and, and this isn't really simulated in the game, okay? But historically, the the impact angle was more favorable the closer you got to between 90 and 120 knots, straight at 190. The, the German and American torpedoes had trouble when the uh, at least when impact was when it was set for impact, hitting at a perfect perpendicular. Uh, so it was usually strive to to shoot anywhere between 90 and 120. Uh, so therefore, that that actually approximates what we. We did right there um, was was that so, um, so there's a hit there okay so um, so that that's that method there um, so I think I'm gonna call it I'll call it uh, a call it a day um, on this particular video set of videos rather this really was two videos the one was a correction and then this, this was the actual positioning one that I wanted to go over uh, but the next video uh, immediate next video is actually going to be about um, no TDC shooting so uh, I did mention in the first video I made this side actually historically was uh, was used for no TDC shooting that's what these particular um, pointers here are for okay so that's what the next one's gonna be it's gonna be setting up for a no TDC, TDC shot okay so uh, but for this I will uh, I'll, I will bid you farewell and we will see you in the next installment